Chef Imani. Evolving. What's going on with you guys? We are here yet at another Sister Girl Talk. Once again. Okay, and this is going to be about a case of the heartbreak. Boy, when I tell you this one is about to get juicy, oh, it's about to get juicy, juicy. Hmm. We about to get ready to get on deep and talk about our ex and our experiences. That's right. I don't know about y'all, but I've been having a lot of anxiety getting on this yeah, camera girl. to talk about these situations, but I recognize yeah. that it's time to release Capiche. <laughs> Capiche. Capiche. So yeah, we're just gonna go right in, dive right into the juicy, juicy, juiciness. That's right. So All ladies, right. let me ask you, where did you meet these gentlemen? And gentlemen. <laughs> and gentlemen. I was being oh, nice. Man. Where did you meet right. these so-called men? <laughs> and uh, try not to, you know, so-called men. And what are you trying to do tonight? Okay. You go first. Well, I met mine graduating, okay? So, you know, I was just a girl. I, I wasn't into all that, oh, I need somebody. I was more of, I need to be by myself. I need to figure out what's going on with me, you know? Well, that's dope. Yeah. You know, I was just, you know, my own breed. But then, uh, you know, I'm graduating high school. I feel like, okay, I need me a boo. Life is starting. I need me a life. I need me a woman. Yeah, husband. I need me a boo. All that. So you know, I meet him, and I met him actually at my uh, at my graduation party. Yes, girl. <laughs> and so like, uh, he was brought by my cousin, and he was actually a relative of my cousin. And so you were dating your cousin? I mean, uh, um, okay. not a, not not my cousin, my cousin's boyfriend. So I mean, oh, okay, that's yeah. how I love it. You want to show? Look at it. It's got got real juicy. It's not even enough incest. <laughs> That's how I met him, and you know, it, it, like we was chopping it up, it was all cool. And at first, I really didn't like him at first, so it was kind of weird, cause it was just like they felt like it was time for me to talk to somebody. You know how it goes when somebody hook you up rather than you just making your own decision. Yeah. So you know, that's how I met him by my cousin, and then you know, it went on from there. What attracted you to him? Mm, how sweet he was. He was a Pisces, the only Pisces I ever dated. Pisces! Yes! They, they know how to get in tune mm, with my emotions. To, they know how to get in tune with your emotions. Yes, and I'm like, I'm a Taurus, so you know, I require attention and affection. And uh, What's the looks? What's no, the no, 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 no,
my gosh. But anyways, that's how that's I met. You ran into the same boy that you thought was fine on the airplane at your cousin. I said, cousin. what are you trying that's to tell crazy. me? No. So, <laughs> is that so you? That's how we met. That's how I was attracted to him. And also, he's from the East Coast. So, like, that's just... Another thing, but it was just that, and that he was like older. Yes, he was like, oh, he was um, like eight years older. He was eight, eight years older. older. And you that being a fast <laughs> You think so? I thought I was crying, like, my man about to be older. My man got two jobs. Honey, <laughs> stay tuned. That's all I gotta say about that. That's all you gotta say. Right. All right. Well, you, Miss Charlotte. Here I am. All right. Um, we didn't say the names. Oh, mine is Lucifer. <laughs> Mine's is Louise. Okay, mine's is Ryan from Chicago. <laughs> Black Ryan, Chicago. Right now. <laughs> Alright, so pretty much all the names are significant for a reason dear to our hearts. That's why I had to chime in and throw that in. But back back to my story. Um, I was fresh out of high school, feeling like I'm doing the damn thing, leaving home. I was 18. And um, yeah, I had just had a situation that really, really redefined how I looked at people and things and situations really broke my trust so I was in the mindset of I'm out here I'm fresh I'm about to do my college thing and I'm just about to do me because I already just had a heartbreak but I ended up getting to school and this guy was attracted to me but he was older and I thought that he was cute and stuff like that but I was intimidated that he was older he was I think he was like 21, about to be 22. And I was only 18, and I felt like that was a large gap. So I was just like, this is a lot, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> but I thought that um, at first I was kind of like, I don't know what's going on, but I liked his demeanor. I, th I think that's what attracted me to him. Yeah. His Older. demeanor, because he was from Chicago, and my family is from Chicago, so I felt like that was like that little piece of home. Like, right. I know I know what you about, you know? Yeah. And then, so yeah, his demeanor, I thought that was sexy, and then he was tall, and his beard. A plus. His Woo! beard. So I was just like, I didn't even know I like beards until I seen him with a beard. So right. I, said, I like your beard. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Check. Um, but yeah, and so I think that's that. I was in college, and yeah, I think he he told my best friend, shout out to my best friend, he told my best friend that he thought I was cute and stuff like that. And so um, we just hung around the campus and we had a nice talk and really, really had a good time. And like, I really felt like, oh, I like, I like this, you know? And yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that's why I'm gonna stop the story right there. Look, like, she ready to tell the whole story. I'm gonna tell the whole story. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> I'm gonna stop it right there. He did this. He did that. Okay. All right. So, um, what do you? What would you say for like hurt you most about this particular situation? That's a deep question. Maybe you should answer that since you're already on the road. Of going. I know. It's since I already want to tell the story. Right. 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 Oh. Ooh. That's deep. I'm ready to hear this. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. Bitch. Ooh. This is going to be deep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This guy and I were attracted to each other and we were talking. We were talking. We were filling each other out. But initially, I felt like it was just too much. I felt like he was ready for something I wasn't ready for it at the time, you know? He was a little bit older, and I felt like it was just too much. But, so, we ended up breaking off. We stopped talking, but when we came back for that winter break, we started talking again. And, um, I just felt like we were talking, but I felt like he was telling me stuff that guys tell girls, you know, like, oh, you're so special. Right. You, you one of a kind. Like, you just. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like <laughs> stuff to really gas you up. And it wasn't even just that. It was the connection that we had. Mm -hmm. It was a connection that we had that was undeniable. And anybody that was around us was able to see that chemistry that we had. And so I just felt like. I fell in love with the chemistry that we had, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And sometimes when you fall in love with the chemistry that you have, you can get blinded by some other things. And I just felt like a lot of 
what he was saying didn't match his actions, you know? It was uh, other people in the, involved in the situation. Other people. Other people. <laughs> <laughs> it was other people involved in the situation, women, you know, involved in the situation. I felt like it was being dishonest. You're being dishonest. How can I be something so special? How could you want to spend the rest of your life with me? But you telling this to that girl and that girl and that girl. So somebody out here lying, you know? And it ain't me, you know? <laughs> right. So and I just felt, I felt like why would you gas somebody up and make them feel this way about you? You know? If that's not how you genuinely feel about them. You know what I'm saying? And if it is how you feel about them, then why not just be honest? about what you're doing you know what i'm saying opposed to letting it come back to me i feel like the connection we had it deserved the respect for you to just tell right. me what was up you know what i'm saying straight to the face to my face you know mm -hmm. so i just felt like overall in this situation i just felt like i thought he was something more um genuine than what he perceived to me okay i feel it but it also was my expectations that killed it, destroyed it. Yeah, because expectations sometimes can. I think our expectations is what makes us disappointed. Yeah. Towards the end, anyway, because a lot of stuff we expected and exactly. a lot of stuff we already knew was gonna happen. Exactly. So, and as women too, I was gonna say like we sometimes we build this thing in our mind like we're gonna run off and get married and run to the hills exactly. and get married like a happy ever after feeling. But yet, as women, one thing is true is we have intuition that we sometimes don't follow, exactly. which gets you in a lot of trouble. And that's your key. And that's your key. Get away with nothing. And follow that. that. And that's, and that's the thing, you have an intuition about one thing, but your mind, it's like, oh, you know what it was? I think I fell for the fact that I had never had nobody that, I never had nobody that I had that type of chemistry with. Uh -huh. And that intimacy, that's what it was, without the sex, the intimacy, you know? And I just felt like, I fell in love with that, and it was a deception, but not on his yeah. On myself because I didn't pay attention to my intuition. Right. You know, and I wasn't listening. I wasn't being obedient. So yeah, it's right. my fault, but your fault, but my fault. Okay. <laughs> so what's your fault? But your fault. <laughs> so with that being said, I can feel relate to you in that situation same thing it was like the lies like the lies were pretty deep like yes it was along with this situationship but like at that time my grandfather passed and he like that's a long story he had the same shirt as him pretty much so like when my grandfather passed he mailed me his shirt my boyfriend mailed me his shirt with the letter like I know how much this means to you and I'll finish the rest of that story remind me about the shirt I'll but yeah you. so yeah so it was just a lot of lies and he would say he was in different places on retreats to the other girls and why lie and go that extreme but it's like once again I was 20 I was a fresh 21 like a month in 21 and you know you have to follow your tuition intuition and all that stuff I fell for it so. yeah well what was that question you asked us again what hurt you most about the situation well what hurt me most about the situation well, I'm gonna give y'all a little backstory so you know I'm 18 and we both 18 so in my mind what hurt me the most was really what you were saying was the expectations that I had for it when I already knew in the beginning what it was and what it wasn't it was what it's not you know <laughs> all that good stuff because at the end of the day it's like I knew my desire was to go to college find me a guy in the country like I always wanted to be a guy in the country I knew he wasn't coming out of Vegas California no way yeah, me too but, okay <laughs> military so I'm with him during you know the process of getting mentally prepared to go you know talking to him every day sleeping with each other getting to know one another getting closer and closer and it was like kind of almost like a whole year of prepping him to leave you know and that's when I met him like right when he made that decision so it was like I see him go your whole relationship was based off yeah of based yep. off of that so it was kind of like I'm not told y'all the juice juice okay <laughs> so what happened was now it's time for him to go. 
he's getting anxiety. I'm gonna give him that. That's his anxiety acting up. <laughs> and it's like he, we kind of like don't know how to. But you can tell how the relationship when a relationship is starting to be off and stuff. So it's like you just get a feeling. Y'all don't talk the same. It's not long. It's not the same. So it was kind of like that. But I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. He wanted to spend time with his family and all that good stuff. You know. So. Why are you gonna say family? Family. You want to spend time with his family, even though he's about to leave. He don't know when he's coming back. I was trying to give him respect because mm -hmm. I do respect your family, you know? Can't nobody separate me from mine. Right. So, doing, going through all that, he left. I'm about to make this, the, the long story short. He left, and he didn't call me like he told me he was going to call me. How you not going to call? He left. Knowing that you're going to be gone for three months without being able to Are hear my call? voice, anything. And it's like, I did talk to you the day before, but you told me you was going to call before you left. So You left at. <laughs> you left at 12 <laughs> That was my issues. You got to realize your issues. Yeah, you have to. You yeah. have to acknowledge it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what I, it, this whole thing, wait, we go talk about this later, but, you know, that's what I had to realize. And so, when he left, I'm mad at him. I don't want to talk to him, but only I, I can't talk to him no way because he didn't tell me where he went. He, don't, he didn't tell me how I'm going to be able to text him or call him. No, I have nothing. Email. But, but the thing is, he felt it. me right back to that soft place I just cared about him a lot I wasn't really mad at him I was mad that he made me feel like he didn't care about me leaving knowing you'll be going for months like that was different that was my first real relationship being so close to somebody talk to him every day when I wake up be the first voice I hear and I go to sleep mm -hmm. you know it's it's kind of weird so like I'm more I'm, maybe that was my coping uh, method while he was gone being mad at him you know yeah. So that's, that's good. That's what that's what it was. Yeah. So like, girl, like that's all that happened, and I decided to write it back. But this time, like, well, he's away. I need to write him back while I'm in my feelings. Let him know. I'm sending you a letter, and I enclose it with a kiss. <laughs> girl, that's my song. <laughs> but yeah, that's how it was. I even kissed it after I went off on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So he double wrote me, and then I finally wrote him. Yeah, double text. Yeah, double text. Girl, this is when we write letters. So he <laughs> double wrote me, and that's when I decided to write him. And I let him know how I feel. Boom, boom, done. He's coming back a month. So I'm like, he ain't wrote me back. I can't find the letter. He ain't wrote me back. I'm like, it's weird. He didn't write back. He was just telling how much he loved me. He missed me. So next thing you know, he's about to get out the he got to get out the military and I'm like dang he didn't even let me know I come even go out there to go to his graduation so now I'm really over it now because he didn't write me back this dude let me tell you what made what hurt me the most okay? what hurt you the most so this let dude, us know he must have been in his feelings about what I wrote him I don't know I don't care What'd you but say? <laughs> it don't matter <laughs> I was just like okay I wait for him to get back so he gets back he don't call me he don't text me Nothing is going on. I don't get no calls. His brother see him. His brother's just like, I don't know what's wrong with him. He just shuts down every time I talk about it. So, you know, I'm like, okay. So, guess what that made me feel like? I'm rejected again. So, you know, that, that's that's what hurt me, that rejection. So, I had my little breakdown. I thought life was over. Life was done. <laughs> wow. Girl, I oh, thought. Gosh. I slid down the wall. <laughs> I slid down the wall. I said, I ain't no military wife. <laughs> he, he done left. Run that lab, okay? But yeah, I was hurt. So that's when I just, you know, I had to 
get over that hurt and I just had to realize that a lot of that hurt was just me you know yeah I think that's what I learned after the situation like being able to have grown from the situation and really mature from it I learned that it was more so me than it was ever you know what I'm saying yeah Cause at the end of the day people can only do what you allow you know true so Imani yeah. now it's time to tell about what your juicy hurt was yeah I want you to go into a little bit more detail what hurt you the most about this situation like what was the ultimate betrayal well y'all because okay so we did meet in the Caribbean or whatever and it could have been left there he asked me on a date of course I'm gonna say yes uh -huh. we could left it at that boom <laughs> no feelings hurt but he wanted to continue it and he came to Vegas to surprise me um, he came out of, like a month or so afterwards whatever and it kept going it was good and I went out there or whatever and I guess what hurt me the most is once I finally knew which was through the girl his ex fiance Beyonce. Beyonce. Look, just, I know this is Beyonce. 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 Not Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> Not Beyonce, but Beyonce. But you could have Beyonce. But you could have Beyonce, but you chose the Beyonce. <laughs> so yeah, next, next Beyonce supposedly, whatever. But she was cool about it. But um, anyway, <laughs> supposedly. But that was just like the life was so deep. Like I guess he tore her when he's in Vegas, cause you know we go hiking and stuff. He was like, yeah, I'm on a retreat, trying to clear my mind, get myself together for you. Ooh, <laughs> Just all the lies. Wait, like, cause so, like, he told the fiance, oh, are y'all going on your hiking? <laughs> my hiking, I'm talking about hiking. He told your hike was a retreat. Wait, you gotta go back and tell the story about the shirt. <laughs> okay, oh, well, thank you for reminding me. Imani, it's your turn. You go, bye. Time shine. It's yeah. time to talk about it's time to shine. How he hurt. How he hurt. I mean, with the shirt. With, with the, the shirt. shirt. Hurt from the shirt. <laughs> hurt from the shirt. <laughs> I met my ex in that same shirt, you know, sometime, whatever, if I get that shirt. So, when my grandfather passed, he sent, my boyfriend sent his, at the time, he sent his shirt with the letter like, oh, I know how much this meant to you, I met you in this shirt, your grand, you sh uh, met, and he met my grandfather, by the way, y'all. And he did not meet you. He met grandpa. grandpa, so. He is nothing. He ain't nothing, never gonna be nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was that, you know, so I'm like, yeah, you know, he really into me, like, he took the time to think of that, a sentimental gift. So, you know, that was that. He just, so that honestly probably hurt me the most because number one, you know, this reminds me of my grandfather. Fast forward, the girl, his, his ex tells me, she says, his she fiance, had that's not Beyonce. His fiance, that ain't Beyonce, <laughs> has receipts. And one of the receipts, I said, let me pull this receipt for myself. In the receipt book, it said, three old navy shirts, him, his daughter, and her. And then it's a picture about the Brooklyn Bridge. I said, oh, not the Brooklyn Bridge. Not I need a picture about the Brooklyn Bridge. It's you. Um, anyway, three shirts from her family's block party. I said, you ain't never gonna Not be Not the family block party. Block party. <laughs> I'm gonna go to family block party, you know? But that was that, y'all. Like, that really hurt me. It was a sentimental fact. Like, you can really go hug my grandpa to this, who's in his grave. That was out of pocket. How you gonna bring my grandpa, my dead grandpa? Not to say dead, No, I feel like you. You know? Like, my grandpa. Cold blood. Hopefully. So that's what really hurt me, like the sentimental. Like he thought he, your lies were so deep and good. Like he thought this out. I know that would hurt me. So but, to cut, to but cover I'm it up. just confused on why he felt like he had to send you his shirt that didn't belong to him, that belonged to his fiance. That's not Beyonce. <laughs> send, send it to you. She bought. Yeah, that she had bought. Three matching. That she bought to send to you to tell you this is for your grandpa. Like. I'll tell you, I burned that up too. And he told you it was for your grandpa? Well, my grandfather had the same shirt. Like, it's up to my, my uncle, he, um, they took some photos of my grandfather. And he met my grandfather. And I told him that. I was like, oh, it's so funny, he had this shirt. It was just, it was a big coincidence. And he used that against me. Wow. It's like he used what was gonna hurt you. It's like, y'all, y'all know what to do to hurt us, huh? Don't y'all. It's because what it is, is God is showing you how your weakness. I know, and yeah. I, I noticed, that's what I said. That's I thought that was the first 21, I didn't know. I feel like because men sometimes are weakness, that's how we learn our strengths. Oh, yeah, right? exactly. And it's like, we, this is what I learned. Women deal with breakup hella different we, guys. Oh, different ways. 
two different ways. How, go elaborate. Count the ways. Okay, I'm gonna count the ways. But I'm gonna bring up one way, and then y'all gonna bring some ways okay, in. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna bring up how women, when we go through breakups, we sit in the emotion and mm -hmm. think about Take play the blame game. Guys, they sit in the situation and tell they so they ain't gonna ever go through that mess again. And when they say that mean that, so that mean they don't even, that's why it's time to process. They don't let it process because they just can't believe the hurt they dealt with. Women are stronger, not stronger than men, but we're stronger in that area. We can deal with that. I don't know why we was built like that, but we can't. Because built guess like what? Because we quit. We don't like got hurt so, six times so, already. You know, I know so I'm about to go <laughs> in. Right. And so I feel like because. We was built like that. We we learned from breakups, and it really gave us like that glow up. I feel like we can glow up after a relationship. It's that true. is true. It's true. I feel like you said the big thing is we mentally take. We try really hard mentally to take care of ourselves, like to sit and we go through the emo the motions of the emotions. But not like, even sad, mad, not even like, try it. But it's something that we just naturally, naturally do. Yeah, yeah. And you need that time to process. Like it's only fair to you. And so guys, we about to get to the juiciest part of the day. You know because. At the end of the day, even though we went through all our heartbreaks, our lives, our cries, what did you feel like you learned from it? Do you feel like it was a blessing or a lesson? Do you feel like it was something that you regret? Like mm, I feel like both. Mm. I, got my, <laughs> I got my lesson, which was to just always follow your intuition. Believe somebody the first time. Like their actions, actions always speak louder than words. Every especially time. when it's more than once. He, you're not tripping. Or oh, that wasn't a coincidence. He wasn't just tripping. No, 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 no. Follow your intuition. And I say it's a blessing because nothing came from that. I was really thinking about relocating and just planning my whole life out with this person. Like, like he said, you're gonna be a military <laughs> wife. I'm gonna be an East Coast wife, and that was that. Right. So no, but really, I'm just glad I didn't go any further than that. I didn't glad I didn't re relocate my life to fit his you know and I learned to always just kind of like kind of seek out the situation first and really feel if the person is for me or they're trying to play me you know just follow my intuition more pretty much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what about for you Beja? Beja um I think for my situation it was definitely a blessing it was a blessing because this situation taught me a lot about myself and I recognized how I wasn't as in I wasn't in tune with myself. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I didn't even know who I was at the time. Mm -hmm. So, and like I mentioned before, I had just got over a heartbreak. So, to fall right back into another one, it was just like, wow, again? Mm -hmm. You know, again, again? Mm -hmm. But this one hurt me more because, like I said, I was more invested in the, into it mm -hmm. and... I think ultimately it just taught me about myself and to to set boundaries, to know my to know myself, to recognize my worth, to recognize what I allow is what will happen to me and it brought me the man of my dreams. I feel like this situation really built me into the woman that I am now because the first heartbreak that I had, it taught me what I didn't like and the second heartbreak that I had, it taught me what I did like but how how what I was lacking. It taught me what I was lacking. And so by me understanding that and finding that and being able to heal that within myself, I was able to be alone and really just understand that and manifest the man of my dreams. And now I'm blessed to say that I have that man that's able to fulfill all the aspects of me that the previous man couldn't, you know, because they wasn't built for it. They wasn't made to handle the type of woman that I am. And I just recognize that. And I just recognized a lot about myself from this situation and I just really grew so I can only say that it was a blessing. And like I said before, even though you had me fucked up, yeah. up, yeah. Uh, up, 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 <laughs> you really made me better and that's all I can say is that you made me better, you made me greater and you built me to the woman that I am for my man that I have now. Well, that's right. You know what? I got a song. Thank you, next. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. next. <laughs> Well, I would say mine was a blessing, a lesson, and a curse. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but nah, like, we got sage for that. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you got sage for that. Oh, man. Incense, candles, and All of it. This <laughs> girl sick. We don't play. We don't play around this thing. But no, it was really, the biggest thing of it all was a lesson. And because it was a lesson, it became a blessing. Hello. You know? And I learned the lesson. Hello. And it became a Hello. lesson because 
Hello! Because I actually learned the lesson. Ooh! Oh. feel and how I want to be, my expectations, what I want in life, I realized that he never had any control. It was only the control of what he wanted to give me and that's all I wanted to accept at the time. So I learned a lot from that. I learned to let go. Don't blame anybody else from making you feel so bad because it ain't gonna change nothing of how they feel. Period. They're never gonna change. Right. They're never. They're never gonna understand how you actually felt when you were sitting there crying, laying there. And I was done. I was over it. Girl. Right. So alrighty, guys. We about to bring to y'all. Y'all. We told y'all was about to be juicy juice, but we about to make it a little more juicy, juicy juice. Okay. So you know, we all got three things that. You know, very deep to us, you know, all in the form of literature, okay? Mm -hmm. So, I personally have a, that letter I was telling y'all about. Yes, guys, I still have it after five years. Five yeah. years? It was so long ago. Yes, I don't know. It's like I'm a hog. And like all my stuff in my bag, y'all can read it, but y'all can't. <laughs> All the stuff I, that I had when I was younger, I always kept it. So it was just like, I didn't realize I had this letter until we started yes, talking about it. I, I kind of did. Can you remember we were just talking about, like, let's talk about exes. And I was like, I got a letter. And, you, and then that's when we, you know, all discuss it. And that's when I realized I need to let this go. It has no meaning to me. It doesn't mean anything. It's just that I don't know how to throw stuff away. So I'm going to throw it away today. Okay? Today. Today. In your face. In your face. And Amari, what are you, what are you going to share with them today? So today I have a piece. I actually have two pieces. One of them is on my journey journal vlog. So if you wanted to go and check it out, no. about yeah. that, go ahead and go to BeijingLight.com and you will find. It's the one who felt you looking. So you can go on my journey journal blog and you will check out the one who felt you looking and that one is dedicated to this situation. But I wanted to bring to you guys exclusive Beja Light writing, right, yeah. healing sex with forgiveness. And this is a piece that I wrote of, off the original journey Look at that journal. Book. <laughs> Woo! That journey, that's been a journey. It's been a journey. This is the original journey journal. Journey journal. So I'm going to read to you guys a piece that I wrote that I feel like many females can relate to when they have a breakup or a heartbreak. So here you go. Okay. And what would you be talking about, Imani? So mine is also a little writing I did. I realized, like, you know, I said I do a lot of reflecting, so it's a piece after the fact and how I came to peace. A little poem here. And his name does start with the L, so it's called Hurricane L. Oh. Hurricane L. I'll start it over. I'm sorry. You ready? Uh huh. Okay, so I wrote a piece called Hurricane L. Name's Charlie L. Alright, so it goes like this. I survived by realizing it wasn't I but you. You came to me with your winds and Lauren. You came to me with your winds and loud ring thunder. Always leaving me to wonder, am I good enough? Your rapid pains caused me so much pain. Your wind caused me whiplashes that made tears fall through my eyelashes. But I survived. The creator had my back, so I was revived. Even though you're a hurricane from my past, I can't but I can't help but wonder which storm came to, came in your path, causing you to leave, causing you to leave me doing the math to find the solution to your problems. The storm is over now. The gray stars are no longer. Sunshine is now what I see, cause now I see the light in me. Oh, okay, okay. Girl. I didn't even know you might be getting like that. I, I'm crying on the low. The tears <laughs> go through my eyelashes. <laughs> so that's that. Making her do the math. No. <laughs> That's not too fast. No. <laughs> no. Alright. I love like that. that. Thank you. Alright. Nisha, it's uh, on you, boo. My anxiety is acting up because now I have to, you know, release some things. And, you know, I'm ready to release it. Are you ready to release it though? Like, what are your feelings right now as you do what you're about to do? When you do it, how do you do it? I'm just excited for my man that's getting ready to come. Like <laughs> y'all help contribute to creating this beautiful woman that I okay. am today, you know. So it's now a release, so you know he can come, you know. Right. So you know, space. I need the clap. Space. Space. You know, I'm about to do it. So what you about to do, dear babe? <laughs> what are you about to do? I'm about to get rid of this. I want to burn. 
burn it, but I can't burn it in here. Well, you know we got. Look at it. Look, I got a light. <laughs> I got a light, guys. Yeah, we just started fire in here, so you know I'm just about to get rid of this, and I'm about to release Can this read pain. Are you gonna read, read it? it? No. Okay. Oh, okay. I feel like it has no significant meaning anymore. anymore. I I've been through relationships after this, you know. It's like that's fresh differences, you know. Okay. So you know, I'm about to release this with all the things. Right. Oh and my it's, God. it's one rip at a time. It's one rip at a time. Oh. Happiness. All of this. And you know, and now I'm me, and I'm just ready to just like, you know, move forward. It doesn't mean anything to me. I, I, I appreciate all of us releasing this bad energy, but it wasn't bad energy because it also was good energy. Yeah. Y'all had any time with these people, didn't we? Yeah. Y'all gave me some growth. All right. Well, you ready to share yours? I am. I am. All right. All right. So I'm going to read it to y'all. We ready, we ready. I'm ex oh my gosh, I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is from my series, Healing, Healing Starts With Forgiveness. I forgive you. I forgive you for pain on me. In your eyes, I was a girl who was, who was nothing but a couple of derogatory terms to you. In actuality, you had me mistaken. I was just a young girl who already experienced her greatest heartbreak before she even knew what that really even meant. But you couldn't have known. Maybe you didn't have anyone to teach you anywhere. I forgive you for manipulating me through the end though, in your eyes, you was just having fun, trying to be the man, doing what guys do. In all actuality, you was violating me. You didn't understand that I trusted you and respected you. That's why I let you in. Not because you was just anybody, but because I admired you. Maybe it was no big deal to you, but to me, it was. It's not that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. I just expected you to care a little more than what you did. I expected you to not feel comfortable with disrespecting me. I expected you to not expose me for something that I wasn't because that's what you perceived me to be. I expected you to see that I was genuine and a person and didn't deserve to be mistreated for you for your pleasure. I expected you to not not bother me if you felt I was not worthy opposed to dragging me punching me kicking me with every negative word you spew by my name but I forgive you hopefully whatever you've been through in your life can help you be better person and not want to make anyone feel the way that you made me feel for so long I was angry with you for sabotaging me and how others perceived me but I forgive you a blessing and a lesson the fact that I like to try to see the best in, in the best in people I put expectations on you that you was never able to live up to I too mistaken you for something that you wasn't at least not for me when you would say you were sorry I would believe you because I was hoping you wasn't that person deep down inside even though your actions towards me kept proving me wrong I see something in you and you use that as a weapon against me it's funny how life works. I naturally was skeptical to even give you a chance. Maybe because subconsciously I already knew you were something serious. You begged me to give you a chance. And I carried your negligence with me for years. Mm. Even allowed you to determine my worth. Mm. But you was just like her boy hurting others. I realize that now. By me carrying your words, action, and portrayal, and deceit, I was only holding myself back. I was carrying your wrongs like I did. I released your baggage in exchange for my work. I gave you too much power over me, and that's what you taught me. So thank you. You were one of my greatest lessons, therefore my greatest blessings, in disguise by far. But I couldn't be more grateful for you, because you taught me how to take my power and worth back from, from unworthy people. Sign the one you made better. Ooh, you know, the one you made better. better. Okay, okay. Okay, like for tuning in. Once again, please leave your comments below on how you feel about this topic. What was your heartbreak song? What was your first heartbreak? How did it make you that. feel? And how, how did you heal? Yeah. And most importantly, what did you learn from the breakup? And how did you make it a blessing? Okay.
and all of that good stuff. Leave it in the comments Stop. so we all know and so we can have just a dialogue about this situation. We want to get to know y'all. Like you know us. Alright y'all. Peace. Bye. And follow us at BGJ underscore underscore three. Don't you be your That things ain't the same. Already know what it's the same, baby. You thought I didn't say what you thought it was. It's all good. Between.